Hello modders and welcome back to Learn to Mop FTL. So, you made it to episode 5, the final one, the big one, the addendum episode that I've been talking about since episode 1 or 2, I think. Uh, this is the episode where we will be going over stuff that we missed uh, during the actual ship creation. So it's just me for this one. Um, and I'll be going over a quite a bit of things to go about, going from artillery, system rarity, stacking rooms, door links, uh, packing up and opening mods, adding ships to make a single pack, um, little stuff like how do you make an AI ship, for example. But we're going to be starting off with the biggest thing, and that is um, slightly more advanced custom weapons. Um, we started off with just grabbing a blueprint from Arsenal and changing the stats, and that works fine. You've seen that. But, you know, sometimes you want, like, a little more color to them or to make them stand out from the actual weapons that already exist in those mods. So we're going to be starting there, and there's... A bit more to it than just giving things a different color if you want to do it well. Um, so first things off, let's go grab some art. I've got the uh, Winnebago files here that we will be going into soon. So let's say um, when I did the care package, there were actually three weapons in there. Um, let me show you which ones those were. So this is the beam smasher that we ended up using for the artillery. There's the rail driver, and I also had this one. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do this, make that work. So first off, the usual step, of course, um, the way I got to this one is if I go back to super luminal. Um, I wanted to make, you know, an ion weapon, and because I knew Rand liked his flak weapons, I thought, well, why not make it an ion flak? So the way I did things. Um, Again, you won't be finding anything on here because I don't actually have the Winnebago loaded. But I do have the Arsenal files loaded. So I went to Burst because that's your shotguns. I looked around a bit. Um, Ion Flak Cannon. The usual one. So it's this one, right? So knowing that, I could go into the Arsenal blueprints knowing be a shotgun Ion 2. So let's do that. We'll go to relevant arsenal files. And uh, that is in. Let me just bring that up. Don't worry about the language. That's a uh, Dutch. Um, so we'll go to data, blueprints. Will not be in here because I believe it's a flag, but I'm going to look for it anyway. Um, normally you'll find DLC blueprints in here too, but I only sent them to stuff I thought we would need. Not thinking that the flag would be. Um, in there, so let me just open up the normal uh, arsenal files, which I have lying around handy myself. Um, this will also be done in sections. Again, there is a lot to go over, and I don't want to record the whole thing in one big batch. Um, let's see, arsenal base data data that's gonna be real embarrassing if the flag is actually inside the regular blueprints so yeah you can see how there's a lot more here. a lot of these are like uh, enemy layouts we can quickly glance over one of those as well but what we're looking for is the DLC blueprints okay so we'll open that um, you can use a notepad here. Um, another good one to use, for instance, would be a notepad plus plus. Let me just uh, open one of these. It's a little cleaner, I guess. Um, let's see if the blueprint I was talking about is in here. So once again, we'll go to here and we'll see be a shotgun ion two. Uh, let's see, shotgun. Ion, that will immediately tell us if it's actually in here. Shotgun Ion 1 is here, so Shotgun Ion 2 should be as well. So we'll just add a 2 there. And he can't find it. Alright, we'll just use the first one, it's fine. Turns out it is actually not in here. Well, that's an embarrassment. We'll just open up the regular blueprints then, uh, which I do have in the care package. 
but I got this open, so I may as well use the full thing. You know, it gives you a bit of an idea on the, all the stuff you'll find. Let me just see if it's actually in here. Uh, shotgun ion. Two, if this dings, we're gonna have a problem. Okay, he did find it. So we can look for a blueprint shotgun ion two. You can uh, copy it over if you want to. I'm not going to because I don't need to. Um, and here we get all a lot of the data we need. So first of all, again, check if uh, the launch sounds are any different. Um, I suppose the easiest way to do that is to not bother with them. Test the weapon without messing with the, the any of the sounds. And if you hear that some of them aren't playing, you know that one's a custom one. Hence why I say that, uh, hey, test your stuff. It's important before you throw it out there. But what we're here for is this. The BA Shotgun Ion 2. Right? So we can copy that and then we can go look for the images. So we'll go back to... Let me just get that out of there so I can look for it myself. We'll go images. Which is in the resource folder. Um, images, weapons. And then you get all this crud go like this and here are the relevant images so we can copy those over you again will have to put that in an image weapons directory um, I'm just gonna plop them on the uh, on the fancy pants yes thank you notepad I'm not gonna update it now I'm gonna go plop those here for convenience so the way I do this um, yeah, I'm not the greatest when it comes down to recoloring images. Any way you see fit is fine. But like, for instance, for this glow, um, I use GIMP for all of this stuff. Uh, it's a free program and it's a pretty solid one. So let me just boot up. Again, this is in Dutch. Unfortunately, I really wish this was in English, but nothing we can do about it. So basically you just go like uh, for a glow it's easy enough but um, let's say color balance no I don't want that one I want this one so cyan seems to be a big one I'm just gonna make that a nice shade of green I'm picking green because that's what I have uh, in the files themselves and there we go okay I was actually a bit too soon it's probably important that you actually check what kind of green you're picking here but again it's not a concern of mine so that's one recolor this shows up when the weapon is charged and ready to fire that's the only time you'll see the actual glow uh we can throw that out i don't need it anymore and then we go to here which again i need to open up in gimp not just in the image viewer and the way i do things here is just the same i do it this way because um if you use this one, it'll recolor everything. Uh, so just go here, go cyan, make it like that same shade of greenish. Make it OK, and that's fine. Now you'll notice that there's like a whole bunch of them in here, right? And you probably know what they are. So this is unpowered, ready to fire. And um, I think these are when the weapon is actually firing. You, you kind of have to use uh, your own wits with that, I think. No, you don't. A lot of this is uh, mentioned. So once you've recolored all your stuff, uh, again, I'm not going to do that. We don't need these. Well, we still need these images, but for something completely different. You can go look for the animations. And again, we went over how to get the animations, um, but I'll show it off one more time. Um, Go to the file with a bit of care package. Should be, yeah, the animations are actually in here. So go back to your arsenal or capped edition or whatever overhaul you decide to use. Um, data, animations. All right. So, one thing again is you can just look for what we searched for earlier, which is the, this, I think. You'll find it here. 
Um, or you can just, uh, again, use the uh, blueprint. Is this the one? No. Ugh, you can tell that I'm just getting started and I already have like 50. Then Yeah, you can just look for this one. Usually if it's an overhaul that is done correctly, naming should be rather similar. So anyway, you go look for the animations. Um, and again, you need an anim sheet and a weapon anim. Um, this one uses, this weapon uses vanilla uh, shots from the ion, so we don't need to go look for those. We only need this. You'll see here that both the images we copied, namely strip eight and glow, are mentioned. And that's usually a good experience of uh, good indicator of what you need. You can also get quite a bit out of here. So uh, the width, the height, uh, frame width, frame height. So you'll see here, for instance, that um, you got one, two, th well, I can just open, do I still have it open in GIMP? No, I do not, because I'm an idiot. Let's open it up again in GIMP. I don't really know how to make custom animations. This is me just going into it uh, using my great deductive skills, which is how I learned a lot from this. So if you have a look at these, um, this is probably only going to be important if you make weapons from scratch, which is something I can't do. So if you look at here, uh, width 256 and height 50, that is the entire image. Uh, frame width is just one of these weapon instances. So from here to here, that'll be 32, which you actually now can't see because I covered it because I'm an idiot. 32, yeah, that's here. 32, 32, 32. So this is image one, image two, image three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think. Um, the length is, I believe, the amount of frames you have. So that one says eight. Let's see if that fits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We knew pretty much as much. We knew as much because it said strip eight here. Um, so that's how you can make these, and that's just the directory where you found the image. So the weapon anim itself uh, needs to load up the anim sheets. Here it says, okay, the sheet is this one. You need this image, right? Um, which it also says here. So length, yes, we went over a charged frame. I believe says you, okay, which uh, shows which, on which one can we see where the weapon is charged and idle it says one here so i'm assuming the naming goes zero one two three so one would be this one and indeed because of the green lights here it's a good indicator that that means the weapon is ready to go fire frames is five of them one two three four five that doesn't match why i don't know again i'm not good with this <laughs> really i don't know how to make these uh, for my own i think fire point is where the shot comes out. Let's see, uh, X18, Y6. Let's just use this one. 18 and six. Yes, this indicates where the shot spawns into. And it'll probably copy that over for each of the ones adding uh, the 32, which is a frame width for each of these. Um, Mount point 340. So if you look at 340, that is, I guess, the start of the mount or the center of the mount. Again, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not good with these. But anyway, that's all there is to it. So if you want to make something like this from scratch, now you know how to, I guess. I say I guess because I've never done this before. I don't plan on doing it. Um, but anyway, another thing you can do, like if you're in here and you say like, okay, um, let's, so we know, this is why I fragment stuff usually when I'm doing guides. Say you don't, you like this, but you kind of want to say, oh, I would want these to be like orange. Well, a thing you could do is just change it here as well. Just make sure that you change them for every single frame, right? You can like put a little red line here if you want to, as long as you stay within the frame width. 
So for instance, if I do like, um, I'm not good at, I'm really out of my wheelhouse on this because custom art is not my forte. And that seems to be true for a lot of, uh, for a lot of modders. So let's say we want this one to not, to be something else. So we select all of them, even though it looks like crud, but you can just like, okay, I want that to be make that purple and there you go not well one shade okay I guess and now you have that purple for instance uh, I did that with I wonder if I can see the images of that yeah if I load it up I can now let's throw this out for a sec um, if I can go to my fleet mod real quick um, I know I'm getting way off track but Weapon animation and stuff is probably the biggest thing we'll be talking about here. This is going to be a long video, so. But I'm going to keep it as one because I said I would. Uh, let's see. Uh, where is my fleet mod? Images, weapon. Chaos cluster bomb. Here we go. I'm just going to zoom in. As you can tell, this is the this was the um, basic breach bomb animation, and I just turned a few of these uh, red, so you know you got like indication. Okay, so it's a breach bomb, but it's red, so it also can deal fire. So yeah, you can get kind of crazy with this. But anyway, um, that's not why we're here. So imagine that you you've recolored your images and uh, you've copied over your animations. Well, at this point, it becomes pretty simple, right? So you've recolored these, you want to rename them. Otherwise, again, you run the risk of them um, overriding the original weapon. In this case, the bio, the BA shotgun ion 2 would be replaced, right? So what you want to do here, if these are all your images, pick like any word that is common in all of them. So in this case, say um, shotgun. So what you need to do once you've recolored this, you only need to do this if you're recoloring them. If you don't, if not recoloring them, you can just copy them and it's fine. It won't override anything. Multiple weapons can use the same animations if they're using the same image. Otherwise, it's just going to look really weird. So then you need to rename a bunch of stuff. You can probably already tell. So say you name this BA Custom. then disappears because you know it's no longer in the search results great <laughs> let's bring that back these are my arsenal files so i kind of want to let's just use the ones in the care package instead uh weapons okay so we call this one ba custom and you can make different ones i just think you shouldn't uh, because again it makes it easier if you stay consistent and you're like custom I'm not gonna bother with this one uh, this shotgun had custom ion flak things um, they're probably here somewhere but I'm not gonna go look for them All right so you rename these and then you have the animations and you'll see that you get the same name. So Bio Shotgun Ion 2, BA Shotgun two, Ion 2, BA Shotgun Ion 2, BA Shotgun Ion Glow 2. You just rename them here as well. Again, you need to do this after you've copied them. Do not do that when you're actually still in the mod. So just do BA Custom, BA Custom. BA custom, BA custom, BA custom. So that the image is here and here and here and here all are the same as how you renamed your recolored images. Now then, are we done? Nope. 
You may have changed the animations sheets to uh, go along with the images, but you still need to tell the game when to use them. So you go back to your blueprint, and you'll see here, weapon art, be a shotgun ion. Replace that with custom as well. So then if you have this done, this done, and this done, and it's all in the proper place, you will have a custom weapon art with changed art. So yeah, it's a bit of a big thing, but you know, I, I'm much more of a fan of just taking a weapon from an overhaul mod, recoloring it, so it's not a blatant copy, and then of course, say, uh, give credit to where you got the weapon from. If you're crazy enough to try something on your own from scratch, by all means, go right ahead, but uh, I'm just not too good at it. Um, so the same thing will go for like a BA sh uh, shotgun ion. Let's see if I can quickly find that. Uh, control F. Here we have the animation sheet for uh, the actual shot. So again, you could turn this into custom, 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 and in the actual shot, um, here, shotgun turned this into custom. And then you also have the recolored shots to go along with it. A lot of things can go wrong here, so try not to move things around too much. For instance, like simply doing this could already break things. It probably won't, but it could. So if you, did, if you did everything and it's not working, try it again a couple of times. Usually it's not a problem, but it can happen. Um, is there anything else regarding recoloring these? I don't think so. So uh, we're moving on to the next thing. All right, so let's talk artillery. Why? Well, I went over most of this already, but... I thought it'd be good for a reminder and not have a few annotations. So what's the deal with artillery? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, artillery takes a weapon blueprint that you can define. For example, in this one, it's the Heavy Laser Blossom custom artillery that I made. And um, changes the base cooldown. Um, that is all that the artillery system does. Now, how does it affect it? Simple. On level 1, you get your base cooldown plus 25%, so a 40 second base cooldown will be 50 seconds. Level 2 is base cooldown, so 40. Level 3 is minus 25%, so 30. And level 4 is 20 seconds, so minus 50%. So what is good, what is not good with artillery? Um, it's pretty simple, actually. You can use any weapon you want, as long as it, A, doesn't use missiles, B is not a charge weapon. C doesn't have too many shots. That too many shots is with a bit of an asterisk. We'll go over that uh, later. So first, A can't use missiles. And um, if you have an artillery weapon that does take missiles, it will not fire. Cool of an idea might be to have artillery take missiles. It just doesn't work that way. Does that mean you can't use missile weapons as your artillery? Nope. Um. It's easy to go over or to circumvent that by basically setting the missile requirement to zero. And a good way to showcase that is by looking at the missile artillery on the boss. So if we go to here, there's going to be a bunch of stuff in here because I have the um, I have Captain's Edition and Arsenal low at the same time. This makes the game probably more than unstable to play, but uh, it does give all the separate blueprints in here, which is what we're looking for. If we're going to look at uh, this, this is the artillery, fires three missiles, deal one damage, but if you have a good look at it, the actual missile requirement is zero. So basically, if you want, you can just uh, take a weapon blueprint. Let me just bring one up from another ship I made. Um, yeah, I can do it. Uh, which we'll find under Jelly... this one. This one has a bomb as artillery, the Chaos Cluster Bomb. If we go look at the blueprint of that. Bomb art. Again, 
no missile requirement. So um, the way I did this, I took the breach bomb and um, took the blueprint, gave it extra shots, namely three instead of one, and set missile requirement to zero. And then you can use uh, missile weapons as much as you want, or in this case, a bomb weapon. Um, okay, so B uh, can't use charge. Simple enough. Um, just don't use charge weapon. If something has the charge tag, it, artillery will not fire. Uh, it will charge up the first shot and stop there. It will not fire the first shot. It will not charge up the second one. That's it. Chain is fine. Um, again, a good indicator of that is my Simo B which for its artillery system has a Vulcan laser. This works, it'll fire one sh first shot at 11, again based on cooldown, then 9, 7, and so forth. Um, so what does artillery do? Well, it completely also negates the um, weapon, well, the power. So this is a four power weapon. Uh, even with one power in artillery, it will fire. Um, again, the power and artillery only change the cooldown of it. So that's a thing to keep in mind. Now the second one uh, that I mentioned is don't have too many shots per volley. Vulcan is fine because it only has one shot per volley, but say the burst laser MK3 has five of them. Why is that a problem? Well, I mentioned this when we were putting in systems, I believe, or custom drone parts, I'm not entirely sure. Um, Artillery can't be targeted and therefore is fired just in a similar fashion as the uh, enemy fires his weapons. One shot per room. So if a, an enemy would fire five shots at you, uh, they will all go for different rooms, I think. And that's the same thing for artillery. Now the problem there is if you have ten shots in your artillery per volley, and you only have five rooms, the game doesn't know what to do with your five shots and just goes, okay, I'm done, and the game crashes. Does that mean you can't have more than five shots? No, again, there's a way around this. Namely with, do I have? There's a s normal ship, right? Yeah, uh, there's a basic ship that does this. Uh, I don't actually need to load it up, but the Fet C, I uh, can load it up here. That'll be under burst because it's artillery, artillery fed C, there we go. So you can't see the amount of shots it has, but I believe it's like eight, seven or eight. I'm not entirely sure. You can tell it's a flag gun because it's 35. It has, well, not because it's 35, but because it has a radius. Now, the thing is, flak weapons as artillery and flak weapons as a normal weapon work differently. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why this is, but it does work differently. If it's a weapon, it'll take the radius, you click on a room, right? There it will calculate that radius, in this case 35, which is about the same um, as a single room, I believe, 35 pixels. Yeah, it sounds about right. And it will launch all those projectiles somewhere within the 35 radius. If it's artillery, it does the opposite. It'll fire all those shots, and for each individual shot, calculate a 35 radius where it will land. And in that case, you can have multiple shots land in the same room. Um, from what I've seen so far, it will generally spread out those shots quite evenly. So if you're fighting a, say, AI ship or a, or a flagship, it will spread it out evenly across the entirety of the ship. So that's one way to circumvent that. Um, so yeah, keep those things in mind. No charge, no missile requirements, and if you want extra shots, get a um, flak style weapon. And that is mostly it as far as artillery goes. So on to the next bit. So there's one more small thing I would like to mention about artillery, but uh, we'll get around to that in a little bit because this is a good segue to move on to system manipulation. What do I mean by that? Well, um, you know how shields or weapons only go up to eight, right? 
What if you're not uh, happy with that number eight? What if you want it to be higher or lower, you know, to make things easier or more difficult on you? Well, there's a few ways to do it. Um, if you want to have a ship start with something higher, that's the easiest thing you can do. Like say you want to have it start with, oh, I don't know, uh, oxygen at four for whatever reason. Well, that's easy enough to do. You go to your um, blueprints where your ship is. I've got one ready here. And that's for my Simo B, right? That's the one you're seeing here. So you want to start. Have to start. You want it to start with oxygen four. Well, you go find oxygen. Here you go, oxygen. Power one. Just change that to a four, and you're done. Save. That's all you need to do. Now, of course. If you want to make like a challenge, you don't necessarily want them to start off with something higher. Maybe you want to make it look more normal and have just the option of going higher or limit the amount of upgrades you can do. That takes a little bit more uh, finesse, I guess. Uh, we'll start off with the easiest thing, which is limiting them. Um, the fastest way and admittedly worst way in general um, is to just limit it for everything and by that I mean limit it for all ships so the way you do that uh, go to your blueprints that you have gotten from either using the FTL unpacker or the trick with the um, slipstream I do recommend slipstream because I've heard issues with using the FTL unpacker anyway you go to your uh, unpacked blueprints and you search for a thing. I got weapons here, so I'm just going to pick weapons. And you're looking for system blueprint weapons. Right? So that's cool and all, right? Anyway, um, if you want to limit things here, the easiest way to do it is just, again, take this blueprint, put it in your blueprint XML from your mod, and just change this number. So you're like, oh, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want the weapons to go up to 8, I only want 6. Set that to six, and then if you want to, I'm not sure if you need to, but you might as well, you can remove uh, these upgrades here. And then you, uh, weapons can only be upgraded to six. Now I mentioned that this is the worst way of doing things, and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, first of all, this is a global change, so every ship in the game player ships, and for some reason flagship too, but whatever, will be affected by this. Uh, meaning, if this mod ship is loaded and you want to go with, say, the, it doesn't matter, the, the Rock B, then you'll notice that the Rock B can also, also only go up to 6. If you want to do it the quote-unquote proper way, which is the way I do it, is that you can also limit systems ships specifically. And that's one of the reasons why I actually have this guy up. I've got, as I mentioned earlier, this as a Vulcan Gatling laser. And if you know how artillery works, and you should know that because I went over it like five minutes ago, that means this could go up to level four artillery, which would mean a Vulcan with a 50% reduction in cooldown, meaning it would fire a shot every 5 .5, 0 0.55 seconds which to me sounded like a little bit too much, and I wanted to limit that at three. So the way I did that, and this is thanks to somebody who told me that, I'm not a genius, uh, let me show you the blueprint of that ship, which I should have up somewhere. Uh, this is not it. Not it. That's the XML for the normal one, DLC blueprints. Here we go. Um, as you can see here, the Simo B, and as you can see here, laser chain gun, which is the Vulcan. And the way you limit this, if you look at, like, say, drones, it looks normal, right? Nothing special here, hacking, nothing special here. If you look at artillery, it says here, max equals three. And this is how you limit uh, stuff ship specifically, which is, better 
I mean, this means if you're playing with the Fed A, Fed B, Fed C, their artillery can still go up to four, but if you're playing with this one, it's limited at three. And that's uh, mostly all you need to do for um, <clears throat> limiting them. Upgrading them to go beyond is a little bit more tricky. Uh, I'm assuming the same thing can be done, but I'm not entirely sure. So again, this will take some uh, testing on your end. Uh, I've never bothered with upping systems past what they should go, except for one ship. And I'll show you that one here, but uh, I'll do that after I talked about upgrading systems. Uh, the way you do that is basically the opposite. <coughs> so say I want uh, weapons to go up to 10. If you want the ship to start with it, again, just go to any ship blueprint you may have. Uh, weapons, weapons, I think they're at the bottom. Weapons power, 10. Make sure to test this because for some reason this is at four, even though, oh, it's the chaotic, so that's fine. Yeah, just set this to 10 and I'll start with 10 weapon power. <clears throat> if you want to have it upgraded the bolt to 10, starting at like two or four or whatever you want, then you're gonna need this again. You can set weapons here to 10 and then you can start um, messing with this. So add level nine, level 10, change the costs of, um, <clears throat> You know your upgrades so this is to upgrade to level two this is to upgrade to level three level four five six seven eight and this is an imaginary level nine you can add uh, to level ten as well um for some reason i mentioned that limiting systems affects the flagship upgrading them beyond what they can do doesn't so you don't need to be afraid to set like shields to ten and then be worried that the flagship will for some reason have a fifth shield layer. So this is one of the only ways that I found out to upgrade them. Um, I wouldn't really do it, but you can. Why do I recommend not doing it? Because a lot of um, stuff, and by stuff I mean systems, can act unexpectedly. I'll talk more about that uh, later as well. So one thing that also needs to be mentioned is um, if you're making challenges, there might be some stuff you want to limit the player to have access to, right? Um, I will go over that in a bit because I just mentioned that I would show you one that I did and uh, I need my chaotic blueprint for that. Uh, is that this one? Yes, the chaotic. Um, I did it wrong here because I wasn't planning on turning this into a pack, so I didn't um, bother with uh, messing up the shield system to to limit well to limit shields here, and it didn't affect affect the flagship only having two shield layers, but that was fun, right? Uh, these are some blueprints for custom weapons. This is my artillery weapon. It's a missile, and as you can tell here, missiles equals zero. So you know, I'm not lying to you. So here are the there's the shield system that I changed. So I set the max power to four. Ship starts didn't start with shields, so don't need to worry about that all too much. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, uh, the second shield bar is 100, which is the default um, price for that. Even though if you buy shields with the ship, it starts at two, so this is irrelevant. And then I made it so a value point was fairly cheap, but if you wanted the second shield layer, you would pay up the nose for it. Uh, other stuff you can do here is change the cost of systems, <clears throat> change the rarity. One means it shows up in stores, zero means that it doesn't show up in stores. So slight difficulties there, but again, I'll talk about it later. And then I went off to cloaking to mess with that one. Cloaking I've set to eight, and I picked, or I just copied over the shield upgrade levels, which meaning this chaotic only has four shield uh, power, but it can go up to eight cloaking. And it uh, turns out that was pretty fun to do. Anyway, you may have noticed something weird here if you've been digging through stuff, and that's this stuff. This code, all of this is, as you can tell, for artillery. And this is the equivalent of a, let's say, a scalpel, while this is more of a sledgehammer. Why do I, what do I mean by that as well? Some overhaul mods can like change the description of this. Uh, 
to something. If you copy the vanilla blueprint and put it in your mod, then the title, the description, and all this stuff will be overwritten by any by any mods that might have done so as well. So it will again show the vanilla stuff, which is handy if you want something unique to be here. But if you want it to fit a, an overhaul pretty well, then you know maybe don't want to use this thing. Same thing if you if somebody would play vanilla, then it would show the vanilla stuff. If somebody would play this with an overall, it would show the overall stuff. These things don't do that. They go find like a specific thing. In this case, uh, let's take this one. Uh, it'll go find a system blueprint named artillery. We'll then look for a tag called title and then change it to what you want. Uh, same thing here for this one. It'll find system blueprint named artillery. I will overwrite the description and just the description. I've done this here because uh, the vanilla description is like, oh, this fires the, um, this fires a beam. Now it's more like, okay, this powers ship's unique artillery. Because, you know, it's not always a beam, right? It's definitely not always a vindicator. Same thing here, and this overwrites the cost. Now, why do I have this code in here? Well, mainly just for this. If you look at systems, uh, let me just open up the original blueprints again. Systems have rarity, just like weapons, just like drones, just like augments. Um, systems only are either zero or one, but zero meaning it doesn't show up in stores, one being it shows up in stores. Simple as that. Now most of these have a, uh, all systems have a rarity of one, except for artillery, which makes sense, right? You've never seen artillery show up in stores if you're not playing overhaul mods, right? So if you want those to show up in stores, if you want artillery to show up in stores because you don't want your ship to start with it, you're going to need this code. You'll notice that in the uh, Winnebago that we were made, we were doing similar things, he copied this code. Um, another thing you can do here is change cost, but I've mentioned that before. Now there's two th things about rarity and systems. And that is that there are two systems that do not follow this rule. One of them is shields, and the other one is drone control. Shields will always show up in stores that are selling systems if you do not have shields. One of the three options will always be shields. You can set this rarity to zero, it will still happen. Same goes for drone control. And I've tested this. You can look for the shield experiments on my channel, and you'll find my test. That doesn't mean you can't make shields inaccessible, right? The easiest way to do this, maybe even the only way, I don't know, is with using this. Again, we're going to use the uh, <clears throat> scalpel rather than the sledgehammer. So say you want to mess with, um, you don't want the player to have access to shields. The way I do that is you go back to your vanilla blueprints and you go find shields, right? System blueprint name shields. What you need to know is this thing. It says shields. Med bay is med bay, pilot piloting, you know. Now you can put that in here. Okay, fine. Copy paste stones and work. And then overwrite the cost of them. Two ways again to do this either you set this extremely high to 999,000 or something, and then you just won't have the scrap to buy them or you set them to zero. Uh, pick whatever you think is the most clean. <clears throat> if it's a 999, you just don't have a scrap. If you buy, if you set it at zero, people can click it for free, but nothing will happen. And it'll show up in the next store selling shields and it'll show up in the next store, but that's the same thing if you set this to zero or 9,999. <clears throat> same thing for drone control. For anything else, um, say, if you don't want a ship to have access to cloaking, See so here, system blueprint named cloaking. Set, set cloaking here, overwrite rarity zero. And cloaking will not show up in stores. Uh, two more systems that need to be addressed. Uh, that's weapons and oxygen. Those are also two systems that in the vanilla game are always present on every ship. Those, if you go look at it in the blueprints, um, that's artillery, as you can tell here, artillery rarity zero. So uh, let's see if we can find teleport. Uh, 
let's just do weapons. Has a rarity of zero. And the problem is a cost of 20. Well, I say problem, but this means it can show up in stores if the ship doesn't start with them for a cost of 20 scrap. You might want to set this higher, in which case again, should put in weapons here, set the cost to whatever you want, 50, 60, 600, whatever you want. Um, same thing goes for oxygen where it's a little bit more extreme. Um, oxygen cost is zero. So if the ship doesn't start with it, you could find it for free in stores. If you're fine with that, leave it as is. If you want this to be a price, go ahead, put in a price. Keep in mind, try to use these as much as you can. I'm not going to go into full detail because even I don't fully understand how it works. Somebody sent me this code, which I'm grateful for, and I know how to, um, well, change it to fit what I need. So, um, that's all we need to know about how to uh, limit or exceed system levels. What do they do? Right, I'm assuming you're curious about that. So let's bring up a blueprint from a ship because that's easier to go over. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Please do not save those. All right, so going back to my uh, Simo, Simo B here. So if you did it, things right, every system should be in here. Um, okay, so let's go over everything. Artillery it starts at four, right? If you go, a basic rule of how things work is if it follows a pattern, then it should continue on that pattern. So if you look at artillery, as I mentioned, cooldown 125, cooldown of 100, cooldown of 75, cooldown of 50, you'll notice it's always minus 25, and it continues on that trend. So a level 5 artillery would only be a 25% cooldown. A level 6 would be a 0 cooldown. It might be going, ooh, 0% uh, zero base cooldown. That means it fires constantly. Nope. It means it just doesn't fire anymore at all. So be careful about that. Battery. For those unaware, level 1 battery gives 2 power. Level 2 battery gives 4 power. And that's, again, a logic pattern. And will continue to follow said pattern 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on and so forth. Keep in mind, high amounts of power can be troublesome for the game. I'm not sure if it still has the same issues with um, a battery because it's only temporary power. But again, if you set the uh, reactor amount past the 25 yeah you can run into problems if your reactor gets limited through like uh, ion storms or battery hacks so i don't think it's a problem with the battery but you know test it right testing 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 so important cloaking uh, we went over this cloaking is perfectly fine follows a pattern five second cloak 10 second cloak 15 second cloak 20 second cloak and so forth the um, chaotic that i made went up to level eight which is a 40 second cloak it goes through the 40 seconds, mess up the UI a bit, um, and it still remain, keeps its normal cooldown. Clone Bay doesn't follow a normal pattern. Um, it's like a 16 second clone and like plus 7 HP per jump or something. I'm not entirely sure the numbers, but that doesn't follow a normal pattern. So this is where odd behavior starts showing up. A level 4 clone bay will give you instant clones and full heal on jumps. I think it's like um, plus 15,000 health or something. Might be even more. So there's really no reason to go past 4. Um, if you want, try it out. Let me know how it turns out for you. But there really is no need. You can't get anything better than an instant clone and a full heal on a jump. Next up, we have doors. Um... <clears throat> You can set it to level 4 and then you'll get level 4 drones without manning them. I think a level 5 door is the same thing as having no doors. Like you could still man, well, level 1 doors then I guess. Um, <clears throat> so, you know. <clears throat> um, drones. Drone power doesn't really affect anything. <clears throat> it's just a measurement of how <clears throat> much drone power you can use. So you can safely go up to how much you want on this one. 
engine power is a tricky one uh, because if you, as you know engines affect two things first of all your dodge chance second how quickly your ftl charges the ftl recharge gain is following a pattern so that'll work past 9 10 11 12 your engines ftl drive will charge faster dodge however isn't so it's like what five 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 two three four five or something or three two four five i don't know that is not a pattern which means going past it will break it how does it break it well level eight engines give you 35 percent dodge level nine engines give you zero so no you can't make a ship that dodges every single shot this way Next up, hacking power. Again, doesn't follow a pattern. It's, what is it, like uh, 5, 7, or and 10? That's not much of a pattern, is it? That's uh, also where things get weird. For instance, I believe a level 4 hack <clears throat> gives you 255 seconds of hacking. Level 5 gives 0. It might also be in reverse, like a level 4 gives 0 and level 5 gives 255. Again, have a test. And if you know it, be feel free to put it at the bottom. Uh, the more information you have on this stuff, the better, right? Medbay power, um, I also don't know, but keep in mind it is tied into Cologne Bay, so maybe best not to go over four here as well. Mind control power, also no idea. If you have any idea how it works, by all means. <clears throat> Mind control affects a lot of things. It's uh, duration, health, and damage. So I'm assuming one of those three or at least one of those three doesn't follow a normal pattern so again it might just completely break or you might just create a super soldier that murders everyone i don't know um oxygen i think a fourth level is fine i don't know how it goes beyond that piloting doesn't do anything if you go past three i believe there's one mod that uses piloting power uh to go to use like the infinite thing um, you can safely go up as high as you want, it doesn't change a thing. Sensors power, sensor power, same thing as doors. If you set it to four, you can have level four sensors uh, without manning them. Manning them might break things. Um, a thing you could potentially do, if that's something you like, um, is like have sensors and doors go up to level four, but uh, do not give it a manning station. Shield power works normally. I've seen uh, sh player ships with five. I don't know how it goes further than that. Again, give it some test. Teleporter, a level four, gives you a zero second cooldown on teleporter, so I don't know why you would want to go any higher. But again, give it a shot, see what happens. Let me know. Weapon power, same thing as drone control, can go as high as you want, I think. Um, because having more power in weapons just allows you to power more weapons. That's about it. Um, and I think that is all I want to talk about regarding systems. If there's anything you want to know, just put in the description below. Well, in the comment sections below. Moving on. So moving on to one more thing. Um, this is all going to be like small time stuff, I guess. Um, room stacking. There's a few ways to do it, but there's only one way I know of, and it's usually not something you want to go for. Um, by stacking rooms you mean putting multiple systems in a single room that's about as easy as you think it is say you want like these two to be together for whatever reason say you want your like your uh, med bay and your teleporter together you know they pour them they immediately get healed right sounds cool hmm? well I just go here med bay then select your teleporter then if you open this up, you'll see here in room zero, you'll find clone bay, med bay, teleporter. Cool idea, but I wouldn't do it. And here's why. Whilst it all functions, you can still use your med bay, you can still use your teleporter. The problem happens when this room gets hit. Every system in there will take system damage from shots fire from the enemy's weapons, drones, asteroids, um, and so forth. Fires as well. So, okay, 
saying, okay, that's fine. Both my med bay and my teleporter is down. I'll just go fix them. So you, you go grab your little Inji from here. You send him over here. He starts fixing the med bay, right? He's done fixing the med bay. He's done. He will not fix the teleporter. The only way to still repair the teleporter at that point is either a repair bomb or AI auto repair. So be really careful because if you don't start with an AI ship, you're not getting that auto repair. And if you don't find a repair bomb, you won't be repairing it either. And this is the main reason why I think you shouldn't do it. Uh, if you have enough space to make a room for every system, then by all means do so. There is one ship where I did do room stacking and I'll show you why. Again, this is not without its problems, but for normal play, this works fine. Um, where is it? I think I did it on the Federation spotter. No, I do not wish to save. So I did room stacking on this one. Quite extensively too, if you look here. Room 10, which is here. This room has a bunch of systems in it that the ship does not start with. It has cloaking, it has drones, it has mind control, and it has the teleporter. Now, why is this not a problem, you ask? Well, you know, FTL has a soft cap of eight systems, right? Not counting subsystems. So as far as the ship starting with, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Meaning you can only buy one more system. Meaning that in normal play, it's impossible to get more than one system in here. If you're using limited time offer, for instance, you can. But at that point, you are making the decision yourself to screw yourselves over if something goes wrong. For instance, battery, which you can also buy, still has its separate room. So in normal play, you cannot stack systems here. Um, there is another way of stacking systems, which is done in Arsenal. And you'll notice that if you go to Zoltom sectors, uh, that you can't like damage enemy shields in there. Um, I don't know how that's done. Um, but it's still something I personally wouldn't recommend doing because, again, uh, whilst shooting at the system uh, or trying to hack it doesn't work, like hacking just won't fire shots that land here, will not do damage to shield system. If you start a fire in here, fire can still get to it and crew cannot repair it. So it's a neat idea, but I think it's something more for enemies rather than player ships. Um, that's mostly it, I guess. Moving on. All right, so next bit, we'll talk about stacking systems. What do I mean by stacking systems? Multiple systems in one room. There's a few ways this can be done, and honestly, I don't think any of them are good. It can make for some great concepts. I've seen some really good stuff being done with them, but a rule of thumb for me personally is if you have enough rooms or enough space make enough rooms for every system to go somewhere else so how do you stack rooms well it's pretty simple you just click on a room that has a system and select another system say teleporter you can see here now that in room 11 there's now oxygen and a teleporter now what does that mean well say the ship starts with oxygen right you'll have a room that has oxygen in it then you end up buying teleporter um, I'm not sure if the images overlay, they might. I think they do, yeah. The problem is, auction will work, teleporter will work, until something hits here. That can be a fire, or just an asteroid, or a laser missile, blah, blah, blah. It'll break both systems. So if something does two damage, it'll do two damage to the teleporter, two damage to auction. Okay, fine. Repair it, right? So you send in your little NG and he repairs oxygen. And then he stops. He's done. He cannot fix both systems. 
there are ways around this. Um, for instance, the AI auto repair can still do it as long as there's no breaches in the room, of course. Uh, where is teleporter? There it is. Uh, yeah, the auto repair from the AI ship, like this one, uh, can fix stacked systems. Another way to do it is um, repair bomb. Uh, why repair bomb? I don't know. It just works. Um, on the bright side, and I guess it's a more than a silver lining. If oxygen and teleporter are stacked, then people board in here they can only destroy one system. Now. There's two ways to do it. The one I showed you is the easiest one. There is another one, which is basically stacking it on top of an empty room. I don't know how that's done, but you can see it, uh, for example, in Arsenal when you're going to a Zoltong sector, which is different from Zoltan sector. In which case, uh, shields were like somehow messed up. And if you fire at the shield room, you won't deal damage to shields. You can't hack them either. If you board in them, you can't do anything. Fire still gets to it. Which again gives the problem that if you do damage shields, they won't be able to repair it anymore. Um, I don't know how that's done. But again, I think you run into similar issues. Um, if you let, for example, let the strip start with a repair bomb, you could do it. Without too much of a hassle. But again, rule of thumb for me personally is if you have enough space, make enough rooms. Uh, next thing is loopy doors. Basically, we're talking about door links here. Um, it's pretty simple, actually. We didn't go over this in uh, the tutorial because, again, I'm not a big fan of it, which is kind of wrong for me to say that, or like I'm being a hypocrite for saying it because the ship you're seeing now has them. Where are those? Well, they're here. Normally, if you put in a door, it'll set these automatically, right? And go like, okay, this room is above it, this one's below it. It'll go from this room to this room, this room to that room. You can change that by this one. Like you see here, um, the left ID is this room, the right ID is this room. So you can go into this door and you'll come out here. I'm going to say come out, I mean, you'll walk da -da 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 here. Now, also, there's a cool effect, and it's pretty fitting for this ship because there's actually not a hallway here. And it looks cool. There are problems with it, which is the main reason why I'm telling you do not do this. Now, the big problem here is stuff can go horribly wrong if you jump when something is like quote unquote spacewalking in this section or in here or in here. If it's a drone, the game will usually just crash. And I say usually just crash because that's the best outcome. If it's friendly crew, which is the mediocre outcome, it'll just get stuck here. It'll stop. The guy will stand here. You'll be unable to select him. You'll be unable to send him anywhere. So you might as well just chuck him out of your ship. He's gone. The worst outcome if it's enemy crew that gets stuck. Because there's no way for you to tell him to go away. What does that mean? Well, that means your ship is in constant danger. And that means that you're unable to upgrade your ship for the rest of the run. So you can see why that's bad, right? Um, if you don't need loopy doors, don't use them. They can be used for really weird stuff. So for instance, you can set this to be an airlock, but First of all, it's usually frustrating towards the player. Second of all, spacewalks like this can cause issues, as I just mentioned. Um, next, we talked about auto repair for eye ships, right? How do you make an eye ship? Simple. Do not put anything here. It's just that easy. No, seriously, it is. <clears throat> if there's no starting crew, your ship will be seen as an eye ship. Has benefits, has downsides. Uh, the benefit is you get auto repair. So your systems will automatically get slowly repair on their own, assuming the room isn't breached or on fire. Um, 
Second benefit, you get a constant manning bonus on all your systems as long as they're not damaged. So you'll always have somebody piloting, you'll always have shields, you'll always have dwarves, and you'll always have level 1 sensors at the very least. Yes, I say you'll always have level 1 sensors at least. So now I hear you yelling, oh, but what if you're in Nebula? You still have them there. So even in Nebula, you can see the inside of your ship, which is kind of weird. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, during the flagship fight, you still have basically level 3 sensors if you have level 2 sensors purchased. So you can still see, you can actually see uh, the flagship's artillery charge, which is kind of neat, I guess. Um, another positive, uh, you can still gain crew, and even if they die, it's fine. The game can never end by losing all your crew if you start out with the ice ship. Downsides, because of course, um, well, to begin with, uh, you'll never get a full manning bonus, right? You'll always have just the base level zero manning bonus, so you know, crew is still handy. Second of all, um, auto repair is slow and breaches are a problem. The way you usually solve this, or the way I decide to solve this, is usually by giving slug repair gel and some way to also speed up repairs. In this case, the repair effector, which I went over on sec episode 3, I think, which basically comes with 2 ion damage and negative 2 system damage. So I can, because this is a bomb weapon, I can fire up my shields, uh, my weapons or shields. They'll take 2 ion damage, but also repair 2 system damage. Um, if you look at my anomaly, uh, let's load, load that one up. No, I don't want to save that. Uh, this one actually starts with a system repair drone. Now, of course, there is still a small problem because you can say, like, okay, why do you need a slug gel if you have a system repair drone? Well, if you get bad luck and this gets destroyed with a breach, this will not repair and you can't send out the drone. Another way to solve this is by creating a shield uh, system repair drone that doesn't take any power, which is possible. Again, just uh, let's see. You go to its blueprint and set power to zero. It means you can activate it even if drone control is completely destroyed. And then you wouldn't need the slug repair gel. Um, what else? I don't have a script for these, so I'm kind of bringing it. Uh, yeah, another downside is uh, you can't buy crew from stores. Uh, the game will think your ship is full on crew at all times. You can still get crew through events, but uh, you can't buy them in stores. So if you have like slavers offering an NG, you're fine to take them. Not a problem. And if he dies, too bad. Game continues like normal. Um, one final thing. Um, FTL has a few events where you can lose crew. If you lose crew, we don't have crew, the game crashes as well. So you can either rely on uh, the trust system, I guess, wherein if you don't have any crew and you get to an event where you can lose crew, that you just don't take the option to lose crew. Alternatively, I think there is a mod that changes so that you always win those events, like, oh, John Lennon Spiders with 100% success, success chance. So you can use that as well, but I think that's kind of cheating, I guess. Um, what else do we need to know about AI ships? Mm, I think that's kind of it. You'll get like a weird UI thing at the beginning where your buttons for uh, return to stations and save stations is like floating in the top left corner, but if you don't have crew, that's not a problem. <clears throat> um, Also, of course, you have to keep in mind that if you don't have crew, you also can't really fire off borders. An easy way to do it is just turn off auction mode if you get boarded by Lanius. Right? So it's always handy to have at least something uh, to fend off borders, whether that's an anti personnel drone or a bio bomb if you want. That's all fine and dandy. Um, okay, so. I think that's it as far as loopy doors and stuff goes. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is um, how to 
uh, open and pack mods up again and how to like make two ships fit into one mod. And that leaves us with only one thing to still talk about and that is unpacking, packing up mods and uh, if you're really inspired and make multiple ships you might want to put them into one single mod. Which is convenient, I've done it for my fleet mod which houses 16 ships I believe. So yeah, um, it's more convenient for people, they only need to download one mod, they only need to install one mod and uh, they can play everything. So how do you do it? Well say you want to put two ships together. Uh, for this example I will be using my spotter which you've seen countless times and my insignus which I believe is in here. So I want to put this one together with my spotter. Now, first thing you want to do is make sure that they don't replace the same ship. If they do replace the same ship, um, I think you can easily replace which ship they take over, but it might still cause issues. I don't know if it's going to be an easy fix. So in order to solve problems, if you're making multiple ships, make sure they replace a different ship each time. So. How do you do it? Well, I got my two mods here, my Insignus and my Spotter. So first thing you want to do is unpack this one. How do you do that? Change the name, go to the extension and change it into a zip. Make sure you get that error because that usually means that you're actually changing the extension rather than just adding zip to it. So you can extract these. Any program will do, I'm just using uh, WinRAR. Uh, extract to spotter. Alright. Then you have stuff like this, right? You got everything you need for a mod. If it's a basic one, it's just data and image. If it's something more advanced, you can see like uh, audio and stuff in here as well. But we've got two pretty basic ones, so it should be pretty easy. So you open the first one from your Insignus. Let me just make sure that I can actually see that it's for the Insignus. There we go. We'll do the same thing for the Spotter. And you have two. Then you just pick which one you're going to put into which one. It really doesn't matter, uh, but let's say, say we're going to put everything from the Insignus into the Spotter. Why that? Because this one has custom audio, this one doesn't. Um, and it just means you have to copy over a little less. So what you want to do is look for files that are in one mod but not in the other one so let's go into data data okay let's see blueprints we don't have that here so we copy over blueprints you can just paste it there that's fine insignus.txt insignus.xml not in here where do these come from i'll show you those names come from here, the layout file name. And this is why it's so gosh darn important to change these into something else other than my ship or something. Because these need to be in, every ship needs to have a separate one of these. Uh, for instance, if we just open up my fleet mod, And there's a lot in there, but uh, again, you don't really need to see all that if you're just playing. Um, Bios Fleet, there we go. Dang it, let me just move over. There we go. That's a lot of stuff you don't need. Um, yeah, here's my fleet mod, right? If we go into data, there you have it. The TXT and the XML for my fire hazard, TXT XML for my gavel, Insignus, Magpie, Mother Hen, Nebula Drifter, Peroxonite, Raptor, Scrapper, Spotter, Xanthoconite. It's all here. And if like you forget to change this for two ships, and you have two of them where you just left it as my ship, you'll get two files. In here called my ship and two files in here called my ship you can't copy those over they need to be differently named for each ship so that's why that's important 
Next up, we keep looking. Rooms XML. Okay, we have something that are in both. What do you do? Simply, you open up both. Bang. Bang. And just copy this. And you put it down here. Save it, and you're good. I just basically go through uh, the entire mob this way. So once you're done with data, you move over to image, customize UI, customize UI. Again, this is why you want your uh, stuff named differently. Otherwise, it could be like mini ship, my ship, mini ship, my ship, and both would both ships would end up with the same icon. You don't want that, you know. Um, moving on to ship. You just merge these as well, and if there's any like, hey, error, then you know you did something wrong, you know. Um, that's how you put. Great, Discord still on. Uh, how you put the mods together? Once you're done, just take this one. You open it. You select these. And then turn them into a zip file, not a RAR file, not a RAR file, not a Win7. It needs to be a zip file. You go like, okay, Spotter plus in Cygnus. I'm gonna do ins because that's shorter. Okay. And you have this thing. Change the zip to an FTL. Just don't forget your dot. <coughs> And you have one mod containing both the spotter and the insignis. Simple as that. And that concludes uh, the learning to mod tutorial. Um, bit of a bulky one. I think this last episode is like an hour and 20 minutes. But uh, that's all I have to teach you guys. If you have any more questions, something isn't clear, by all means, use the comment section below on the relevant videos. And I'll try to help you as much as I can. So get out there. Go create your mods. Make sure to test everything that you're trying. And uh, if you made something cool, let me or Ran know and we might uh, give it a go on our respective channels. So, thanks for watching. Hoping you learned something. Uh, this was a fun little project for me to do. And, uh, yeah. You can now be a certified modder. I'm not sure if I'm going to do um, one of these videos on event modding because I'm not good at it. But, uh, I don't know, maybe if there's enough ask for it, I can teach what I know there as well. Again, there's a few more things we didn't go over. One of them being, um, <clears throat> like, adding your custom weaponry to weapon lists <clears throat> so that, like, enemies can still use them or that they can show up as blue options in events. But uh, you don't really need all that stuff, right? Anyway, that's it. So, hoping you learned something. And uh, bye, everyone.